me take a moment to look at my nails. That is probably the girliest thing I've ever said. Look at them. They're so pretty. My little sister, as she likes to be called, my younger sister did them. Natalie, you know. Hi, Natalie. I have come to decide that any time I have a special event or anything that requires me to actually put an effort to look nice, I'm going to have her do my nails. Having these nails is actually surprisingly hard. I never would have thought I would ever get nails like this. And so for me to say, look at my nails, is the weirdest thing for me to say. I have a dumb phone. I don't have it around me. Probably should. There it is. Hold on. And by dumb phone, I mean that it's not a smartphone. So I call it a dumb phone. It looks like this. You know, it has a little keyboard that when you look at your text messages and see that one of your friends wanted to call you. I'm sorry. It has one of these keyboards, you know. <laughs> Texting on this is so incredibly hard with these nails because I have to use my, you know, you use your thumbs to text. In order to reach the buttons properly, I have to use my, the nails. Did I make easy? I have to use the nails like, like this. I feel like I'm thumb wrestling with my phone when I have to text. And also, before we get into the video, shout out to Juan. Hi, Juan. You are the Juan and only. I miss you. I hope you're doing well. So, hi. After that little interlude, on to the video. Hello, everyone. It's Megan. And I must admit that for the past few days, I've been having a little bit of trouble sleeping. For some odd reason, right as I'm about to fall asleep, my mind will be like, oh, we haven't thought about this in a while. And you know, some amazing memory will come back and it will haunt me for the next three hours. It's not that I have trouble sleeping. There was a while when I was younger where I had horrible trouble sleeping, but it's gotten a little better since I had that job as a baker, but <laughs> getting up at 3am does things to you. The term that always comes to mind to describe what these memories or thoughts or ideas, uh, well, I, uh, the term that I use to describe them would probably be an existential crisis. If you haven't heard of an existential crisis before, and according to wikipedia.com, an existential crisis is a moment at which an individual questions the, the very foundations of their life. Whether this life has any meaning, purpose, or value, this issue of the meaning and purpose of existence is a topic of the philosophical school of existentialism. Well, on that happy note, these are a few of the existential crises. These are a few of the ex these are a few of the thoughts that keep me up at night. Before I get into it, I just want to say I really hope that this doesn't cause any of you to have an existential crisis because I sometimes I will look at my sister and try to explain it to them, and I I'm sorry if you are watching this. I am sorry. But try not to think about it too much, don't worry too much, but you know, the thoughts keeping up at night is easier said than done. Um, but these are some of my, we'll call them existential crisis thoughts. What causes my existential crisis? I don't know. We'll just, we'll just go. Okay, I have this um, thing that I like to call the soul theory it's not gonna make much sense so bear with me on all of them because probably none of them are gonna make any sense this is what I call my soul theory where you can never truly connect two people so to speak I mean unless of course yes you have the human centipede where you can connect two people but we are literally our own person we are our own human and you can never really connect, so to speak, with another human. I mean, sure, you can chop off your arm and sew it to someone else, but you can never really connect two souls. I mean, it may feel like it, but it's it's baffling to me that we are just our own little pod. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm just going to move on to the next one. Okay, this is one that I realized about a week or so ago when my family and I were in um, Glacier National Park. Oh, side note, if you want, at the very end of the video, I'm going to have clips of Nature, Gl Nature Glacier Park. 
I'm going to have clips of Glacier National Park at the very end of the video so if you want to stay and watch those you can because it's such a beautiful place so I would appreciate it you don't have to but I would like it if you did this is what I realized is where you I don't know maybe it's just me but whenever I go on a trip somewhere I go you know you go to other towns you go to other cities and places um, but I always find it so interesting to see how those towns and cities are, but mainly how there are other people living there. I don't know if that makes much sense, because you know, when you're in your own city or town or place, you, you know, you're in that group of people, and then you go traveling and you look around and suddenly there's other people leading their own lives with different walks of life with different stories to tell and yet here I am in my little town with my own walk of life and own story and there's so many people in the world. This is one that is probably the worst one. Yeah, this is the one that's probably the worst one of them all. This is the one that keeps me up probably a lot. And that is how you never can truly plan for anything. Now let me explain that because you know people make plans you know they make plans for the upcoming week we're gonna go swimming on this certain day or you know I have work on this day and work on that day I'm but what I mean by that is is that you never can no one really has the ability to see into the future so to speak you cannot plan for that does that make sense I don't know because I I don't sit here and think I'm gonna go out with my friends later you know we're gonna go for a hike and a bear is gonna come along and attack us and one of my friends is gonna die you never can truly plan for that but if you were to sit there and worry about it then you would be hiding under your blankets all day long never actually living life I don't know it barely makes sense to me so I'm sorry if it doesn't make sense to you because <laughs> then there was the ah The next one that I find kind of funny is my sister and I will usually take the back seat of the car. My family is quite large, so being in the back seat of the car is like furthest away from the AC and everything that you could possibly imagine. So, because we have a big car, I don't know, maybe it's the heat, maybe I don't even know what it is, but my sister and I call we have this called the back seat syndrome, so to speak. Everything suddenly becomes hilarious. Um, randomly, I I don't know. When I have hours and hours to sit there, you know, my mind goes haywire like it loves to do a lot. I randomly turned my older sister Katie and I, <laughs> but I randomly turned to my older sister Katie and I say, what would we do if the car suddenly lit on fire? Which caused her to stare at me. What? Mom. I still don't even know the answer to that one because there was so much stuff in front of us and so much stuff behind us that if we were to suddenly that if the front half of the car were to suddenly light on fire or if they, we were about to drive off a cliff, we would be forced to be stuck in there because, you know, I thought, oh, we could jump out the back window, we could jump out either side window, but no, the side windows have like a little box that opens up about that far and then the back, the trunk, was so full of stuff that you could see about much, that much of the window. We would be stuck. Might have caused her to look at me the way she did. I'm trying to think back as to what caused all of this to start, right? But if I were to do that, I would cause another existential crisis. My idea is, is that when I was really young, when my family and I lived in California, when computers still had where you would each have your own individual file to log onto the computer, I don't know if any of you have that, my family did, but we had our own individual files that we could log on. And with mine, um, my older sister and older brother, they had made it so that you know when you log on and a sound comes on, they had altered it so that when I would come on, the computer would say, Excuse me, but who gave you permission to exist? Which, you know, would make me feel really bad and there were a few instances where I would cry afterward because then I would be like, yeah, you're right, who am I? But, and I'm like, what, six years old? <laughs> Well, that's it for this week's video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. I am terribly sorry if I caused 
any of you to have an existential crisis, but if you did, you can always come talk to me, come talk to Jennifer. I will try and help you through it because you just want to, when they happen, you literally just want to lay on the floor. So if that's, if that, you know, if that's what you want to do, if you start having an existential crisis because of this, then sure, go lay on the floor, make yourself some popcorn, you know, just lay there until the cows come home. It's okay. But if you did enjoy it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, sparkle and nails. <laughs> but don't forget to subscribe. Everything will be listed down below as to what you may have inquiries about. If you have inquiries, everything will be down below. But without further notice, I shall see you next week. Good bye. <laughs>